Steve, uh, the relationship between science and religion has uh, fascinated me my whole life. I think, to be honest, it has obsessed me. Mm-hmm. Uh, trained in science, very interested in is there a God, hoping there's a God, but not wanting to fool myself. Um, you've approached the question differently as a physicist. You've, you've posed the question, it's not science versus religion, but it is the the question of materialism, mm-hmm. uh, and it's religion versus materialism as, a, as, a, as opposed to pure pure science. So I want to understand why materialism, as a way of thinking, is important. And perhaps we can begin by by looking at the terms that are used. We have materialism, we have physicalism, uh, you know, and, and naturalism. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do these terms articulate, and then how does it affect the, the science uh, religion debate? Well, naturalism is the idea that things have natural explanations. Uh, materialism is the idea that the ultimate reality is matter. In the final analysis, that's all there is. Uh, physicalism is kind of a, a, a modern variety of, of uh, materialism that uh, says everything is just physics. That, that's the ultimate reality. Physics can explain everything. Right. So in materialism, people think it's so matter and energy are the same, and of quantum theory, and so all this stuff. But that can be folded into physicalism. Right. Physic. It's just the laws of physics. Right. That's it. However, however deep they are, and right. however they go. And naturalism is, is a methodology. It says everything. It says uh, naturalism is uh, is has different versions, but it's essentially saying things of natural explanations, and science is is the search for natural explanation. Right. So, and uh, uh, as, as a religious believer, as a Catholic, uh, I have no problem with things having natural explanations. There's a misconception. I think this is actually at the root of the science-religion tension, is that many people think that nature and God are in competition. That if something has a natural explanation, well, then God had nothing to do with it. And if God did something, well, it's supernatural. So it's either or. And therefore, the more science can explain naturally, the less there is for religion to explain. But that's a complete misconception. Uh, uh, Because God is the author of nature. So nature itself, natural explanations themselves point to God. You know, that's easy to say, but it it is in fact the case historically that religion has tried to explain many things, and as science has advanced in its uh, ability to explain things naturally, uh, religion has been painted into a smaller and smaller corner on a large floor like this room. Maybe religion started out explaining this whole auditorium, and now religion is explaining maybe a little piece well, see, of the I, corner. I don't think historically that's true. <laughs> that is, I don't think that historically the biblical religion, Judaism, Christianity, were trying to explain natural phenomena. Mm-hmm. Um, the analogy I would use, again, uh, it's one of my favorite analogies, is um, a, a, a play. So in a play, say Hamlet, uh, Hamlet kills Polonius by stabbing him. And I often ask audiences, why did Polonius die? Was it because Hamlet stabbed him? Or was it because Shakespeare wrote the play that way? And, that, and they laugh because it's an absurd <laughs> alternative. Both. Because there's a, there's a cause of Polonius' death within the play, which is Hamlet stabbing him through a curtain. That's the cause within the plot. But there's a cause of the whole play, and that's God, and they're not in competition. And so, uh, yes, scientists studied natural explanations within the plot of the universe, so to speak. But religion tells us that that whole plot is the result of the creative mind Mm. of an author. The two aren't in competition. God is not a cause within nature. He is the cause of nature. That's the key. And, and, And how then could you come to that conclusion because uh, you're only able to, or are you only able to assess that which is within nature? Well, that's a good point. See, the, the atheist would say, how do, I, how, do, what, how do I have evidence of something? What's evidence? You religious people don't have evidence for God. Well, for a materialist, an a- evidence is either what you can directly perceive with the senses or Logical a duties. natural cause of what you're perceiving. I perceive a compass needle move, I infer the natural cause is the magnetic field, which I can't see. God is not a part of nature. I can't sense him, nor is he a natural cause. He's not a cause within nature. So yes, we don't have that kind of evidence, but God is, the, as I said, the author of nature. And so just as a book 
gives testimony to the existence of the author, even if the author isn't found in its pages. God is not found in the universe. The author is not found within his work, but the work nevertheless testifies to his existence. So uh, what is your approach to so-called natural theology? Is natural theology, which uh, was uh, obviously uh, you know, several centuries ago, was very, very prevalent, then it fell into great uh, 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 disuse and, and criticism, and recently it's sort of been revived in different ways. Well, it can be done badly and it can be done well. If natural theology is done badly, it's trying to say, well, we can't find a natural explanation for X, Y, or Z, therefore God did it. Yeah. That's essentially what the intelligent design movement says. Um, but that's not the way things should be argued. In fact, that's not the, if you go back to early Christian writings, you go back to the Bible itself, they don't point to things that, have, that are not natural or miraculous. They point to the orderliness and the harmony and the beauty and the lawfulness of nature as testifying to God. They point to the natural as testifying to God, who <laughs> is the author of nature, <laughs> just as the symphony testifies to the composer, nature testifies to the author of nature. In your uh, acclaims uh, uh, pinning the, the blame on materialism as a way of thinking, what other kinds of evidence do you use? For example, the evidence of uh, the nature of consciousness, which is a whole other field in which people dispute uh, about the capacity of even the physical world, the laws of physics, to be able to explain consciousness. Right. Is this I, part of your argument? <clears throat> well, I would say that physicalism is clearly wrong. Um, one of a number of uh, pieces of evidence for that is the phenomenon of consciousness. I think it's, it's almost demonstrable that consciousness cannot be explained by the laws of physics. So, so at least physicalism, I think, is untenable. And, and even the consciousness of animals uh, would, would, would uh, militate against that being a correct theory. Um, that, that, that you state that as a, a strong fact. I, yeah. mean, some, I think a lot of philosophers who are non-theists actually subscribe to that, but it, that's very controversial. Well, let me explain. So what is physics? What physics is, is equations. It's quantities that can be measured. It's quantities that can be calculated. It's mathematics. You give me a physical system, and even if I know all the variables, all the numbers, all the equations, a complete mathematical description of that system, there's no way of inferring from that, logically or mathematically, whether that system is having subjective experiences, whether it's feeling something, of course. whether it has some interiority or subjectivity. There's just no way to get that from equations. Physics is equations. The equations, you can't deduce from these equations and quantities anything about the consciousness of that thing. It seems, seems to me that is, that's a, it's as simple as that, actually. <laughs> so it sounds like in your uh, uh, approach of the uh, problem of materialism being the, the, the core problem in, in science versus religion, you point to two things, the nature of existence and the nature of consciousness. Those are the, your two core arguments to underline materialism. I would also I got say, that right? yeah, I, not just consciousness. I, consciousness is a very easy one to grasp, but I think also there are arguments that certain aspects of the human mind, of our rational powers, uh, cannot be explained in mechanistic ways. Uh, uh, many people think, well, the human mind is just a biochemical computer. We have a very compl complicated program, and that's all we are. Uh, I think there are sophisticated arguments uh, uh, that, that that's not true, that the human rational faculties are not just some, something reducible to machine behavior. But, and I would also, one other thing, I think there are arguments coming from quantum mechanics that imply that, um, that conscious beings cannot be completely reducible to physical description, at least in the context of quantum theory, if quantum mechanics is right.